So at Edinburgh University, we've had really a couple of decades of quite significant investment in digital education. Um, we have had kind of phases of, of, of investment, firstly to develop kind of ways of thinking about teaching online, and then a second phase, which was <clears throat> more focused on the development of fully online distance master's programmes. Um, so that that's the kind of history, and that was a that was a, I would say between about 2008 and about 2018. Um, and where we are now with that is at a position where we have as an organisation a, a fair level of confidence um, and knowledge um, of how to how to teach digitally and how to teach online. I think Edinburgh, as other universities, ha has tended. Um, to divide um, our kind of online cohorts from our on-campus cohorts. Um, so we have a very large portfolio of really fantastic fully online master's programmes, and we have some pretty good online teaching that takes place um, with our on-campus students. But what we haven't really addressed is what I think is the next um, kind of paradigm shift for education, for higher education teaching, which is on how do we account for different kinds of student mobility and how do we give students more opportunity and more choice over whether they're on campus or whether they're um, online and i think this is this is the major challenge i think for um program design program administration for learning technology design um for the next couple of decades i think it takes well if, if, as a paradigm shift it involves kind of re, really reconceptualizing how we think about the task of teaching um so it involves a lot of creative work <coughs> excuse me um it involves a lot of creative work i think in terms of understand academics building an understanding of how to teach online and then how to teach online and on campus cohorts together um it takes um investment in technology infrastructures um both in terms of the physical estate and the kinds of technologies we put into our classrooms to enable students to come in um, from remote locations into um, campus spaces. Um, and then, of course, it takes investment in the digital estate as well, thinking really creatively about the kinds of platforms and infrastructures we need to put in place to deliver really high quality digital education um, to really diverse student cohorts. Yes, OK, so the, the Manifesto for Teaching Online is a, really a kind of distillation of a 10 year research programme that we've been conducting uh, within the Centre for Research in Digital Education, and it sets out to do two things. Um, firstly, it's it sets out to bring a kind of critical perspective to how we think about educational technology. Um, so there's a tendency across the sector for uh, technology to be seen as, as being driven by um, commercial providers and platform um, providers. Um, and actually, we in the manifesto, we wanted to, to, critique, to critique that, to understand educational technology less as a market opportunity, although it undoubtedly is a market opportunity, and more as, a, as something which needs to be based within in the values of um, our universities and our academic and student bodies. So the manifesto at, at brings a kind of research agenda to bear on that question of, you know, who, who owns the narrative around educational technology? Um, and our argument there is that um, universities need to get better at telling their own story about what they want from educational technology um, and, and be less driven by the kind of futuring narratives that are coming out of corporate educational technology, which tend to be um, differently motivated. So that, that's one thing that the manifesto focuses on. The other thing it, it, it tries to do is to um, sort of shake up some of the truisms that surround um, teaching online the most fundamental one of which is probably that um, on-campus teaching is somehow fundamentally better uh, than online teaching and always will be. Um, and this has been a narrative which has become particularly prominent in recent months through the COVID crisis. Um, but the point that we try to make in various ways through uh, the manifesto itself and through the manifesto book is that actually online can be the privileged mode um, and that it isn't necessarily the case that the campus has to be the touchstone of authentic academic um, experience. You know, we can as creative teachers within higher education um, design in ways um, to bring the online into the on-campus space in really creative ways and to give our students 
much more flexibility and mobility about how they engage with our education programmes. I think in a way, um, COVID has been it's been absolutely devastating, but it has it has required universities to to embark on a very rapid sprint in terms of digital upskilling um, among the academic and student body um, and to understand the kind of administrative kind of implications of that. So a lot of work has been done under incredibly difficult circumstances, which I do feel will pay dividends um, in the future. It's, it, it, it isn't what any of us would have wanted in terms of, um, you know, the lack of uh, capacity for, for planning. But actually, at Edinburgh and, and I know at other um, institutions globally, so much creative work has, has gone in to understanding how we can build really strong, high quality student experience through digital um, means. So it's true that at Edinburgh we have had a lot of investment in education technology over the last decade or so. Um, but even here, it's been very difficult for a lot of academic staff to understand how to pivot to online. Um, you know, so even in well prepared organisations, I think it, it's been very, very difficult. Um, I think the challenge now is for universities to build on what we've learned through um, the COVID experience and through the rapid digital pivot and actually take what we can from that in terms of how do we plan for a really resilient, robust future education portfolio um, based on what we know uh, from COVID. I think one of the challenges here is in um, our confidence as universities, as, as, as organisations to set our own agenda for the kinds of pedagogy we want to adopt and how we want to map that onto what digital can offer us. And I know that there has been a tendency to for institutions to immediately look to sort of market platform providers to understand how to how they can possibly shift online. Um, and of course, that is part of the picture. But I think my, my strong feeling is that universities need to approach that from a position of confidence and saying this is what we want from our platforms. You know, otherwise we run the risk of adopting platforms and then adapting our pedagogy to fit with the platform. Um, and actually it needs to be the other way around. We need to say this is what we want to do in the digital space and this is what we require our platforms and our digital environments um, to do for us. So there, there, there are a few challenges, but I, I think the post COVID era is a big opportunity to do some good work. Um, yeah, it's a really complex issue, isn't it? How do, how do you engage stakeholders across such complex organisations as universities? Um, I, I think there are various ways in, in which you do it. So at Edinburgh, um, we have our usual committee structures, which have done all the kind of administrative and, and kind of strategic thinking around digital um, and what investments we need to make in digital. Um, we've also had sort of ground up projects um, like the Near Future Teaching was one that I led here at Edinburgh, which was a kind of co-design process um, working with university staff and students to understand the values that they wanted to bring to the future of digital education. So for me, the key issue here in terms of engaging particularly academic staff and students is in making sure that the digital infrastructure that we bring to bear maps closely to the values uh, that they hold um, as, as the community of scholarship, if you like. So, for example, when we did a similar exercise at Edinburgh, what came through really strongly was that people wanted technology which helped them build community. Um, and that isn't always the case with, you know, off the shelf uh, platforms, um, they often aren't designed really, often they're designed, for example, around content delivery rather than about community formation. So if you take that kind of bottom up approach and say, how can technology help us build really strong academic communities, that that has implication for the kind of technology infrastructure that we put into place. Um, so it, stakeholder engagement is complex. You need, I think at the core of it actually is the need to be able to tell really good stories about what it is that we want from the future of digital education and to tell those stories from again from a position of confidence and a basis in the values of the community of scholarship. I think it contributes to lessening inequalities in that it can help us build more diverse cohorts of students 
Um, you know, so for example, if we're not requiring students to to come to campus, um, then that is opening up a whole a whole range of possibilities for students who wouldn't otherwise um, be able to 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 be here in Edinburgh, for example. Um, so I think there are some real advantages in in terms of diversity and inclusion. Obviously, there are clear problems as well, issues particularly around access to the to the right technologies, the right um, broadband and network infrastructures, and so on. Um, so it, it's it's always going to be a balance. I mean, I think what we have found um, through the COVID pivot has been that there have been some real opening op openings up for students, um, for example, with disabilities or students with caring responsibilities or students who can't travel, you know, and who have found it immensely beneficial to be able to take part at, um, and study um, online. Um, but there are always cons where there are pros. And I think that's about having having a kind of clear set of strategic objectives for of, of what we want um, from digital education and then mapping our sort of technological infrastructures onto that. I mean, I guess I, I, guess I just keep coming back to this, um, this idea that we need to be able to tell a really good story about what it is we want from digital um, and then everything else uh, flows from there. Um, yes, I think I think it's it's I think it's I think it's problematic um, when that happens when digital transformation is driven by, um, for example, you know, information services or information strategies, uh, because it then it just doesn't bring academic stuff uh, with it. I think that's you know key to this is bringing the academic staff body and and to an extent the student body um, with you. On a process of, of digital transformation, um, I don't think we can see it as something which belongs to the business end of the universities. It has to be driven by the academic values um, and the academic needs, and, and that's a really important part of, 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 of putting a digital strategy into place. I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we really know yet. I mean, certainly, at least here, we're still relatively early on in trying to understand the implications of, um, you know, surveillance technologies. Um, yes, learning analytics, learning analytics as a field has has grown and it's become is maturing, and and that's good. But I think it's it's going to be very problematic for universities if if they aren't building. Um, strategies for data and learning analytics um, and engagement analytics and so on from a basis of trust. I think if students in particular um, don't trust the institution, um, then any attempt to implement uh, sort of learning analytics um, or any kind of engagement monitoring is going to be very problematic. So again, I just keep coming back to this 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 idea that whatever we do has to be based in in trust. Um, and a building of consensus around what values we want to bring to bear uh, when we build and design our digital environments and infrastructures. One of the one of the most heartening things to come out of COVID, at least in our institution, was a kind of massive rethinking about um, about assessment and the place of exams, um, and, and some really creative thinking around that. I mean, there's a lot of work to do there, though, right? Because we have decades of um, plagiarism detection infrastructures in place in universities which are fundamentally built on the premise that academics or universities don't trust their students you know um, so I, I do think there's an awful lot of work to, to, to do there around plagiar plagiarism detection in particular and the future of, um, of, of assessment. Um, I would like to see us building our assessment strategies on again from a position of trust Rather than one of fundamental distrust, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think residential universities are kind of are, are built, you know, almost by necessity around the idea that the campus is the place to be um, and the place to be a student, and anything else has, you know, historically been seen as a, a, a diversion from that or as, as somehow um, not not as good as that. And I think that given given the digital age that we are, are now kind of well into, that needs to shift. Um, I think universities need to move away from 
designing for the campus um, and designing for the content that is delivered from the campus to toward designing for students and for new kinds of student mobility um, and the digital um, the digital infrastructure is a, a really essential part of that. So I really I really see it as a as a paradigm shift away from campus centrism, if you like, towards something much more flexible, much more contemporary, much more 21st century, which is focused on the, the truth that students need to be mobile. They want to be mobile um, and they and, and they probably don't want to always be on campus. So how can we design really high quality programs of learning um, to that paradigm rather than to the campus centric paradigm? I think the emotional hooks, and this is a, a, a research based kind of um, observation, that the hooks are community. So when students, when distant students um, come to Edinburgh to, to study, um, they are focused on their community, their course communities, their programme communities, and th those are what make the experience for them. Um, so, I, and this is what came through from the teaching project as well, is that people want the community and in fact, care less about about the physical locus of that community than you might think um you can make very very strong communities online and and we we do and, and that's what students want 